It's the Life Songs Morning Show. Hey, I'm Josh, and I'm very excited to have Taya with us on the Zoom. She's, uh, she's calling in about her brand new album, which creatively was also named Taya, right? How you doing? Yeah. I'm so good, Josh. You nailed it. The My self-titled debut album, Taya, um, is, is exactly that, and um, it's lovely to be here. So thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Uh, before we get into talking about the album, I wanted to play a very short game that I just made up. It's called A Word from the Lord. Guaranteed you're going to know the answers to these questions, though, okay? I love it. I can't wait. All right. Here's your first question. The promised land was often referred to as a land overflowing with milk and blank. Honey. All right. What delicious bee vomit is mentioned 61 times in the Bible? Um, honeycomb. Honey. All right. And finally, what Jessica Alba dance movie was released in 2003? Oh, oh this I know. Because you better believe I was like trying to do all the dance moves. It's also called Honey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what, is, what does Honey mean to you, Taya? <laughs> well, Honey was um, actually the word that I felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to me just before heading into... Um, you know, the, the writing and the, and the making of this album. And it was at the last kind of gathering that we had in Australia before the worldwide pandemic hit and the whole world shut down. Um, and I just remember, you know, praying so clearly and desperately saying, God, if you don't show up and give me a word, um, I can't do this because I haven't been writing for seven years. Um, I don't know how to do this. So I need a word from you to be able to go. And similar to that Moses prayer, like if your presence doesn't go with me, I can't do this. And so I sat in this conference and Brookie Vigil was leading worship and it was just free worship. Um, It was like a gift moment. I'm wearing this, like, it sounds so silly, but I wore an eye mask for like 20 minutes. Like it was the gift moment that every, every, you know, women, woman in the room got one, but I just wore it because I said, I can't take this off until I hear you speak on because I am feeling this project that, um, you know, we'd always slated for the start of 2020 that was coming up and I'm just like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And I actually felt the Holy Spirit say, not audibly, just an impression on my heart, that this was to be like honey. It was to be sweet, palatable, easy to digest. And as it goes down by the grace of God, um, because honey has healing qualities, that it would heal some deep things on the inside and perhaps wounds that maybe were still tender and people didn't realize needed tending to. And so that was, I knew it wasn't a song. I knew it wasn't the name of the album. I knew that this was just essentially my true north to keep coming back to every time in this process that it was stretching. And I'm just so grateful that we have a God that speaks, um, that he's not hiding. And, you know, it says in the, in, in the Bible that, you know, if you seek me and you seek me with all of your heart, you'll find me. And so I, for me, an album, you know, at the end of this whole process is amazing. And I'm, I can't believe like I have an album and it's coming out. It's just so exciting for me, but to have heard the voice of the Lord just through the Holy Spirit. And then my husband, um, he came home after I had heard that word from the Lord. I didn't tell him about the word. I didn't even tell him that God had spoken, which is silly because I should be like, he spoke. I'm so grateful. Um, But he came home. He said, I saw this um, gift for you, thought of you. And so I bought it which kind of tells you who I'm married to. Like he just lives in this space of like, I love Jesus and I am his child. And so if I'm abiding in him, then I'm going to hear what he's saying. And so then he said, I just thought of you. And I was thinking, you know, we're trying to be a little cultured and maybe he got like a beautiful rosé and and like, cause we're in the wine country, like just, you know, something fancy. He gave me this brown paper bag as I was literally sitting in bed with like my notebook of looking at those words going, was I hungry? Was that actually the word from you, God? handed me this brown paper bag. I pull out a jar of honey. And I was just like, you and what? Like, you're not going to believe this. And I just felt like, okay, God, that was the word. You just confirmed it, which is in his kindness as well. Like he knows us. He knows that perhaps we would need just a little bit of that extra confirmation. So that was the words that I ran with for this project, that it would be like honey. <laughs> that, that's beautiful. I love that story so much. And you sweet little hippies out there in California. <laughs> Um, no, it's, no, it's so cool. I love that God does that for us, that he gives us those little extra moments. And I have people ask me all the time, how do you know when God is speaking to you? I'm like, trust me, you're not going to be able to ignore it. Like, it's just, it's going to line up in a way that only God can do. And that's beautiful. Yes. No, I I love that. He's in the little details. Mm -hmm. 100%. 
So a lot of the Life Songs family will recognize your voice, Taya, from uh, songs like Oceans when you were with Hillsong United. And I guess you're kind of always a part of that family, no matter what. Um, Now that you're striking on your own, I think Honey was a great word to lead into the vibe of your self-titled debut, because I've listened to about four songs. I haven't gotten the full album yet. And it is, um, it's so comforting. Like it's, it's just easy and, and sweet and very different from kind of the sonic waves of Hillsong United. How did you find that vibe? I mean, that's very kind. Um, and I love that you would get that vibe because again, that, you know, that's all I could hope for that the word that I got from God would be, you know, that it would be easy to digest because to be honest, this is the first time where I get to give my full expression of, of who Jesus is to me um, through my own words, through my own melodies. Um, Cause I've been given such an incredible, um, you know, opportunity to steward other people's songs. Um, you know, I didn't write oceans. I didn't write T- touch the sky or amazing, Grit, like all these fantastic songs, which I'm so grateful for because I feel like, you know, um, the Lord gave me a confession that I would need to be able to walk out that season. And I've been doing that for the last nine years. And I always knew that I was meant to be writing, whether it was to be released or not. I just felt like I wasn't being the greatest steward with that, um, part of my life and what I felt like God had, you know, said, Hey, this is also part of what you meant to be doing. Um, but again, God's timing's perfect. It's not our own. And the way that he just ordered it to be, um, you know, all of a sudden a, the time slot that we had originally said, we're going to go to Nashville. We're going to go to London, like just these silly, like big plans of like, ah, like the Taylor record, like what, you know, what's it going to be? And we thought we're going to have all these other people involved and then the world shut down mm-hmm. and, um, and it was a silver lining. And I say that, um, you know, with awareness of the fact that that season, which I feel like we're still coming out of essentially just now, um, holds so much for so many different people, a whole lot of loss, a whole lot of, so I, um, it, I say it as a silver lining because it, it's such a, a big season for a lot of people. Um, but for me, it allowed me to pivot to zoom um, and find my voice in a way that if I'd been in the room with people, um, it sounds so silly. I'm known for my voice, but I struggled to really raise it creatively. And like, this is what I think. Or like, what about this melody? Which is so silly. Cause I'm like, I'm confident. Like <laughs> I know who I am in Jesus. I know who I'm not, but for some reason I, I actually just needed that, you know, to be in my home, to be with the piano that I, you know, had started rewriting on, you know, since I was like 30. And, and so it just, um, for for the sound to be different as well. Like um, what was sweet is that I haven't actually, I hadn't shown any of my um, close family about, you know, any of the songs that I'd written in the past. They heard some of the early stuff and they just look at me and they say, I've never heard anything before, but this is you. This feels like you. This feels like how you would say it. This even feels like you. And and that's like, to be honest, like just the kindness of God. Um, John Guerra, my producer, is I call him John the Baptist. Like he is kind. He is like potent with his words. If you've heard any of his music, and I hope my, one of my prayers is that people would discover his music through all of this because he is a, you know, poetic wordsmith. Um, and he just laces in truth that like, you know, hits you with a dagger, but it's with such grace and tenderness. And, um, and even the fact that I love that you said that it sounds so different because mm-hmm. that was you know, I feel like me being fully me is like the weird chords and they're just like, you know, there's more black notes than the white notes and just like funky and a bit of soulful. And, um, you know, I, I love that you would instantly be able to hear that sonically. And so, yeah, it's, that's very sweet for lack of a better word. Sorry. <laughs> sweet like honey, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Your story. I think a lot of our Life Songs family definitely can relate to this. God is a creator. And he puts in all of us this need to create. Some people that's writing songs. For some, it's carving bowls or creating an Etsy shop or something. But everyone is built with this bit of God in them to to want to, to need to create in order to be the most fulfilled version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And you hear that in your album. Can you real quick give us the story behind For All My Life? That was the, the last song that we wrote, which is classic Jesus, you know, 11th hour, 57th minute. You're just like 
you know, I haven't been writing for seven years, so I don't know how to write a single, let alone I'm just celebrating if we finish a song. I'm like, this is like, um, this is success to me because I haven't done this for so long. But um, I was just writing, you know, we'd set aside for that last day to write with Hank Bentley, um, who's an amazing songwriter and producer himself, John Guerra as well, my producer, and one of my main, you know, songwriting collaborators um, through this whole project, pardon me. And um, we're just talking about my life story up until this point and just talking about the goodness of God and what he's done. And it was from that launch pad um, that we kind of went into, like John had this idea of, you know, Matthew 11, 28, 29, 30 of like um, God doesn't place, Jesus says, like I will not place anything ill-fitting or heavy on you um, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, which is just what a beautiful picture that um, a yoke is something that brings two um, animals together to be able to carry a, a weight. And, you know, so many times in the Bible it talks about like, um, you know, we're not promised a perfect life. We're going to, we are going to have like, we, you know, we live in a fallen world. Um, we're humans and with other humans. And so we will have trouble, but I was even reading this morning in, in the Psalms, like we have promises. It says, I will be with you in trouble. It says, you know, take heart for I've overcome the world. Like, wow, how amazing that we have a God that says, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to teach you how to do this. And I love the message um, paraphrase translation of that verse, which kind of feels like an overarching theme of this record as well. Like just the like, come with me. Um, This is what Jesus is saying, an invitation, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And I pray that that's tangible in all the different songs in little ways. But the other main um scripture that this is based upon was proverbs 3 5 and 6 which is trust in the lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight and after we finished writing that chorus i realized oh my gosh like we've just put my testimony to melody and and it's something that i am actually happy to confess for the rest of my life because it's not my feelings and not my words but it's it's a reminder of like you know when my trouble is too heavy where do i go I turn to you when my mind feels cluttered and cloudy, which I'm like, you know, even the last, like, let's just be honest, the last six months, even within a local church context, like there's been a lot of stuff going on. And I'm just like, God, you know, where do I turn to with my questions? Where do I turn to with my grief? Where do I turn to when things are happy, when things are good? And it's just this reminder. And I love that say with the rest of this record and however it goes, like results and all that kind of stuff, that's God's territory. It's not mine. And so I kind of love that we even touched on it, um, you know, in this, in, in this song that like, even if it looks like I'm empty handed, I will go where you, where you tell me to go and I'm going to follow you. And I love that in the scriptures, it also talks about, I will give you the fullest life in the emptiest of places, which is only God, which I just want to say, I hope that, you know, whatever season, whether you're in the, the greatest season of abundance or of lack, that this is a song that can encourage people that, you know, God is with us and he's actually true to his word. And um, and if we lean into him, you know, that, that scripture says, I can do all things. It's actually, I can do all seasons. I can do all seasons, like all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so I just pray that um, it's a good faith reminder of just a little jolt of joy of like, no, I can trust God and I can be joyful no matter the season as well. So it's a little sweet one.